This is the man for whom today will not be a good day. A man whose worst nightmare becomes reality. I haven't got any more money. This is the man whose orderly world is about to be torn apart. For the man to whom fate has dealt the cruelest of blows, the race is on. Can this man leap the highest hurdle in the shortest time to achieve a lifelong dream? John Cleese stars in Clockwise, Sunday night's movie on BBC One. This weekend, from the ports of Britain to the graves of Normandy, the BBC commemorates D-Day with unprecedented live coverage. From the parachute drops to the cathedral services and the fleet reviews, the men who went by land, sea and air are remembered on both sides of the channel as the BBC brings you the pride and sorrow of D-Day Remembered. Trent Bridge is the field of play at ten past midnight, highlights of the opening day of the first test match between England and New Zealand. First hour on BBC One, body liners are out, but what about the odd verbal googly? Good evening. We're back in London tonight. We're back in London tonight and intriguingly our panel includes two men who could be leading their parties into the next general election, though neither of them has declared his hand. Our audience, a cross-section of the British public as ever, here to question Michael Heseltine, President of the Board of Trade. As the only cabinet minister who was in Mrs Thatcher's first cabinet, he sat through probably more cabinet meetings than most, he's seen the downfall of three Tory leaders playing a key role in Mrs Thatcher's departure. He says he wants no part in the ousting of the present leader. Quotes, everybody takes preferment of its thrust upon them, but that doesn't mean everyone's out there conspiring to achieve it. John Prescott, Labour's shadow employment secretary. He left school at 15, a former merchant seaman and trade unionist. He comes from the left of the party. With Gordon Brown now out of the Labour leadership race, he's got to decide whether to oppose Tony Blair. If he did, he might need to explain his recent remark that he was not in that league. Alex Carlyle, the Liberal Democrat spokesman on Wales and employment, a practicing barrister, his latest contribution to the debate on crime is to suggest that sniffer dogs should be taken to the scene of a crime and should then sniff their way down an identity parade until they can match the scent they've picked up with that of a suspect. <laughs> he calls it the Fido parade. <laughs> Which, of course, brings us to P.D. James, the distinguished crime writer, now Baroness James of Holland Park, a crossbencher in the House of Lords. For many years a civil servant in the NHS and the Home Office, she's now proofreading her 14th book. She says that the appeal of detective stories is not the gory murder, but the restoration of an orderly universe when the crime is solved. And our search is always, of course, on question time for an orderly universe. So let's have the first question tonight, 